Good day! Welcome to this video entitled Planning a Test and Construction of Table of Specifications. It is important to plan for a test and specially design a table of specifications so that we can have an effective, reliable, and valid test to really assess the performance of our students. Here are the important steps in planning for a test. Number one, identifying test objectives and or lesson outcomes. Second, deciding on the type of objective test to be prepared. Third, preparing a table of specification. We call that TOS. And then constructing the draft test items. Try out and validation. These five steps are important in planning for a test. And I will be discussing them one by one in the next slides. Step 1. Identifying test objectives or lesson outcomes. Identifying test objectives. An objective test, if it is to be comprehensive, must cover the various levels of Bloom's taxonomy. Each objective consists of a statement of what is to be achieved, preferably by the students. For example, if we want to construct a test on the topic subject-verb agreement in English for grade 5 pupils, the following are typical objectives. Example, level or category. In this table, in this table we are shown the Bloom's Taxonomy original and the revised Bloom's Taxonomy. So for knowledge and remembering, learning outcome can be the students can identify the subject and the verb in a given sentence. For comprehension and understanding, we can have the students can determine the appropriate form of a verb to be used given the subject of a sentence. For application or applying the students can write sentences observing rules on subject-verb agreement. For analyzing <coughs> or analysis, the students can break down a given sentence in, into its subject and predicate. For evaluation and evaluating, the students can evaluate whether or not a sentence observes rules on subject-verb agreement. And lastly, for synthesis or creating, the students must be able to formulate rules to be followed regarding subject-verb agreement. Looking at the levels of the difficulty of this example learning outcomes, you can see that there is a very good alignment between the categories or the learning the categories of the Bloom's taxonomy and the learning outcomes. Step 2. Deciding on the type of objective test. The test objectives guide the kind of objective test that will be designed and constructed by the teacher. This means aligning the test with the lesson objective or outcome. For example, for the first four levels, what are they? Remembering, understanding, applying, and analyzing, you can construct a multiple choice type of test. For application or evaluation, you can give an essay test or modified essay test. So that is as much as possible aligned with the Bloom's taxonomy that you have outlined in your learning outcomes. So for the first four levels, again, you can construct a multiple choice type of test. And for application and judgment, this covers evaluation, give an essay test or modified essay test. You can also use this in the create section. At all times, remember class, the test to be formulated must be aligned with the learning outcome. You should always go back to what you intend to happen or your learners to learn after your discussion. And this is what we call the principle of constructive alignment. For step 3, preparing a table of specifications. So we are now coming to TOS. What is TOS? 
TOS is a test map that guides the teacher in constructing a test. All other authors call this as a blueprint where you need to outline what are the types of tests, the number of test items that you need to do for the test. So the simplest TOS consists of four columns. So it is presented in a tabular form and the minimum requirement for a TOS are these four column table. First column is level of objective to be tested. Second, statement of objective. Third, item numbers where such an objective is being tested. And number of items and percentage out of the total for that particular objective. So you will see an example in the next slide. In the table of specifications, we see that there are five items that deal with knowledge. And these items are items number... 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. Similarly, from the same table, we see the five items to represent analysis. Analysis or applying 11, 13, 15, 17, and 19. The first five levels of Bloom's taxonomy are equally represented. Let's check 5, 5, 5, 5, and 5. Very good. While the, the synthesis or the creating sec section or category is weighted equivalent to 10 points or double the weight given to any of the first four levels or five levels. The table of specifications guide the teacher in formulating the test. Let's see, as we can see, the TOS also ensures that each of the objectives in the hierarchy of educational objective is well represented in the test. As such, the resulting test that will be constructed by the teacher will be more or less comprehensive. Students, without table of specification, the tendency for the test maker is to focus too much on facts and concepts at the recall level. I know you have noticed that. Constructing test items based on a TOS ensures alignment of learning outcomes and assessment tasks. So that is why it is really recommended, it is really Oblige that teachers should make a table of specifications before constructing tests so that the objectives will be well distributed from the low level thinking skills to the higher order thinking skills and also the number of items taken from the contents or the chapters that you have discussed will be the same or equivalent depending on the time or the number of hours that you have presented that to your students. Percentage will be gotten by dividing 5 by 35 and you get 14.29%. So this is just an example of a table of specifications focusing on the Bloom's taxonomy. There are table of specifications which focus on the content and you will specify the level of the domain instead of having all these level outlined here. So I will show you an example of that in the next videos that I will be making. Step four is constructing the test items. Class, this is the actual construction of the test items where you should consider what you have written in your table of specifications. There is a general rule here that says it is advised that the actual number of items to be constructed in the drop should be doubled. The desire should be double the desired number of items. So, for example, if you have five recall level items to be included in the final test form, then at least 10 recall level items should be included in the draft. What's the reason for that? Because after the tryout, there will be 
there will be items that can be deleted due to they are too difficult, they are too easy, or non-discriminatory. -discrimin Hence, it will be necessary to construct more items than will actually be included in the final test form. And finally, there is most often, however, here, the tryout is not done due to lack of time. That is why there are items in the test that are too difficult and too easy because we don't give it a try or have validated it properly before administering it to the students. So, step 5 is item analysis and try out. The test draft is tried out to a group of pupils or students. So, the purpose of this try out is to determine first the item characteristics through item analysis and B, characteristics of the test itself like validity, reliability, and practicality. So, from that try out, you should be able to do item analysis, which will be part of our discussion next chapter, to consider looking at validity, reliability, and practicality of the test. So this is the step five that is often missed in classroom teaching or classroom testing because we don't have enough time to do it. So that's all for my presentation this uh, this day. That This is the five steps in planning for a test. Thank you.